hi everyone and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before and welcome to the first unboxing of 2024 so okay the first luxury purchase i did in 2024 i did unbox a pair of sunnies uh, that i purchased towards the end of 2023 in 2024 but this is the first 2024 luxury purchase and it came in this like a nondescript um, shipping bag i guess so this is a vintage purchase that i purchased via vestia collective i know that Vestia Collective has been getting kind of a bad rap on uh, social media and probably like rightly so, I didn't do any like uh, in-depth research on that. I've been buying from Vestia Collective on and off over the last couple of years. I purchased, I think handbag-wise, only one handbag, which is my Chanel Medallion Tote, which I adore. And I'm fairly certain that that's authentic. I had it um, authenticated via like a third party and it came out fine. I did have one meh experience when it comes to Vestia Collective and um, buying. I've, I've never sold on Vestia Collective because I think the um, like fees are way too high. Anyway, I digress. This is from Vestia Collective and um, yeah, I guess let's get into it. So it's a vintage scarf and I probably included the brand in the title and all the thumbnail. So oh, it will be kind of hard to show you like on screen. So I'm going to like include like B-roll and close-ups. But let me hide behind the scarf. There it is. So this is an Hermes scarf and I did a little bit of research and I decided, yeah, I mean, you could say that the scarf warrants its own video, but it would be a fairly short video because we would basically be done here. But I decided to do a little bit of research into the scarf design itself. Also the artist behind the scarf and a couple of other artists while it was at it. <laughs> Let's start with the name of the scarf which actually i found conflicting information on so it's either called saint Anne à londres which in english is 100 years in london or londres 1850 either of the two and the artist let me look down i might have to consult my notes which i um, like placed besides me just um, to make sure i provide you with the right information so the artist is called philippe ledoux by the way there will be a couple of french names so I hope you'll excuse my pronunciation. French is definitely not my native language. I'm gonna try my best, but if I butcher one of the French names, apologies in advance. Anyway, so I guess let's look at the scarf in a little more up close because even like looking at it from afar, there are tons of details to explore. So essentially you have 12 scenes from both London and Paris. The Paris scenes focus on streets and boulevards, whereas the London scenes essentially follow the flow of the River Thames um, from west to east. So the first London row starts with the new Houses of Parliament and Somerset House. New as in like the new Houses of Parliament because the old Palace of Westminster had burned down in 1834. Also, if you look closely on the right hand side of the buildings, you see, well, you kind of see nothing because, as I said, based on one of the names that I found for the Carré, the design displays London as of 1850 and construction of the Elizabeth Tower, so the bell tower that houses Big Ben, wasn't finalized until 1859. So that kind of led me down a rabbit hole of researching how Elizabeth Tower was constructed and it only got named Elizabeth Tower for the Queen's Jubilee anniversary. I think. Anyway, don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you with um, information on the construction of the new Houses of Parliament and Elizabeth Tower, but I found that really interesting. Anyway, the row below is Paris again, so was the first row, which I realized I just skipped past. Below that is another London row, and those are two scenes standing on the south bank of the River Thames looking north. One scene has St. Paul's Cathedral in the back, the other one is Billingsgate. So nowadays that view would be filled with skyscrapers from the city of London, like the Gherkin and all that. Whereas back then, the only somewhat tallish structures were church towers and um, the monument, which you can see on the left-hand side of the scene. Then you have two Paris scenes again, and the last row is London again, with the River Thames on the front. One scene is the Tower of London and then London Docks. So as I said, if you look at the sequence of the London scenes, you start in the West with the Houses of Parliament, and then like basically travel along uh, and down the River Thames uh, to the East, and you end up at London Docks. If you've watched my channel for a while, which by the way, um, shameless plugs, <laughs> consider subscribing if you haven't already, but maybe you've been watching some of my videos and for some reason you haven't quite decided to subscribe yet, just subscribe. You can unsubscribe at any time, but it literally costs you nothing and it would mean so much to me. And if you're new, obviously also consider subscribing if you feel like the vibe of my channel um, resonates with you. Anyway, 
If you've been following me for a while, you know I did live in London for half a year and um, last year. So London definitely has a special place in my heart. So this uh, scarf, which is like right up my alley. Plus I love Paris as well. I did go to Paris uh, last year twice, once for my birthday and then like um, in mid-December for, yeah, just like the December one was very impromptu and only like one and a half days, but I enjoyed it so much. Anyway, so when I stumbled across the scarf, I didn't like particularly look for the scarf, but when I stumbled across it, I just knew it was meant to be. So really glad that I found this. And by the way, um, yeah, I did say I purchased it on Vestia Collective, not sponsored, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, they don't know who I am. And I paid, like including shipping and the authentication and everything, I paid a little under 200 bucks, which for it being a vintage scarf, it's a lot, but um, considering the condition that it's in, I think, yeah, only one tiny bit, although that might actually be part of the design. Who knows? There's like one mark that I just spotted. I'm fairly certain that was also like flagged in the um, description. So it wasn't that much of a surprise. I'm actually more surprised that the condition is as good as it is, considering this is a proper vintage scarf. So yeah, designed and probably also like produced in uh, 1966, 1967. It's proper old, so considering its age, the condition is immaculate. So really happy with the scarf. And as I said, the designer is Philippe Ledoux. And from what I was able to find out online, Philippe Ledoux apparently is one of the more prolific designers when it comes to Hermes scarves. I think the numbers might be off a little bit, but like ballpark of up to 90 different scarf designs. That's nine zero, which is crazy and quite impressive. By the way, I'm gonna leave all of my references in the description box below in case you're interested. So safe to say he was quite prolific in terms of his designs. And not only did he produce lots of designs for Hermes, but also some of the most well-known designs when it comes to Hermes Carré's. For instance, Cosmos is also by Philippe Ledoux. So is uh, the Napoleon scarf uh, Spring as well. And um, yeah, a bunch of other designs. I'm gonna try to find um, pictures online that I can use and uh, like insert right here so you get like a visual. But yeah, he was fairly prolific in terms of the amounts of silk scarf designs that he produced for MS. And also, um, yeah, he did produce some very well known and still highly coveted um, scarf designs. In general, I love how Hermes decided to go about their scarf designs. Most of their scarf designs, if not all of them, um, are produced by like third-party artists that do have a name for their own. And yeah, they do like illustrations or like actually like proper paintings. And that way, because they work with so many artists, I think I read somewhere that they've been working with like a total of 150 different artists. You have such a vast like um, variety in terms of the designs because every artist obviously has his own style and his own preferences. So some are fairly like nature focused, for instance, animals. Some are very focused on the heritage of the Hermes brand. So Brie de Gala, obviously, I'm going to talk about the artist that designed Brie de Gala in a second. So like, yeah, the equestrian vibe is definitely reflected in lots of designs, um, especially like some artists very much like focus on the equestrian side of the brand. Other artists are a little more playful in their designs. Some are quite abstract. Some are like very geometrical. So yeah, you have a huge variety, not only in terms of colors, but also in terms of the designs. And I love that about the MS scars. And obviously they bring out new designs uh, like every season. By the way, um, another shameless plug, but I feel like it's kind of like relevant to uh, the topic of this video. Most of you probably don't know because I don't think I've ever mentioned it on my YouTube channel, maybe once like on a side note. I do have a second Instagram account. It's called Le Monde Hermes. It's um, yeah, spelled out a little different with like an underscore. So I'm gonna include like the handle on the screen and also I'm gonna make sure to link it in the description box below. So Le Monde Hermes is the name of the magazine, like the A4, um, format magazine that comes out twice a year by Hermes and like it's not so much a catalog but yeah actually more like a magazine you have like interviews and like information about the brand but also like other brands sometimes usually brands that work with Hermes and Hermes also brings out those like square um, mini like booklets magazines about the Carré scarves. I did hear some rumors that they actually stopped doing those and um, they did change like the format nowadays I think um, unless they discontinue them and they were like more like a A5 format but back in the day there were these tiny like square ones and then in between for like I think starting in 2017 going upwards and um, they had this like elongated rectangular shape. Anyway 
And so Hermes brings out these like catalogs, magazines, whatever, and I collect those and I showcase those on my second Instagram account. And the Le Monde Hermes magazines go all the way back to the 1970s. And I think the oldest uh, Le Monde Hermes magazine I own is the one from 1977. It's just like so interesting to flick through it and see the different designs and the different preferences. And um, also in some of the magazines in the back, they list like all of the boutiques that were open and like <laughs> in business back then. And that list was super short at the beginning. I just find it incredibly interesting and fascinating to look through Hermes history essentially. So if you're interested, make sure to give my second Instagram account a follow and in general, like, let me know if you're interested in me maybe branching out and talking a little more about these magazines or like my collection and do kind of like a flick through some of my um, older magazines, like in a YouTube video. Yeah, let me know. I'm quite passionate and like interested in Hermes history, fashion history in general. So um, yeah, I do tend to geek out about stuff like that. I haven't yet on my YouTube channel because I don't know if you'd be interested, but let me know and um, I can definitely make that happen for you. Anyway, side note, long side note, sorry about that. Another interesting fact, and that's where we segue into like another couple of um, scarf designers. Philippe Ledoux had a nephew or grandnephew. Specifics are a little like wishy-washy and I do have to read out his name. So his nephew or grandnephew is Vladimir Rybalchenko. And Vladimir Rybalchenko also happens to be um, one of the artists that collaborated with Hermes. So yeah, apparently a very artistic family. And Vladimir's son, who is Dmitry Rybalchenko, also happens to be an artist that designs for Hermes. And while you might not be familiar with their names, you might be familiar with their designs. I think out of the two, Dimitri's design are a little more well-known and I think he produced more and he might actually still be going. For instance, you have the uh, Peinture Fresh, so fresh paint um, translated again. I'll, I'll try to include um, photos so you get an idea and like a visual. That's by Dimitri Ribalchenko. Then we have Space Shopping in Faubourg, which features the um, Faubourg Saint Honoré boutique. Uh, another two um, designs, I think like Noël of Faubourg is also by him, as well as uh, Minuit of Faubourg, again featuring the Rue Faubourg Saint Honoré store. So apparently he does have a thing for like um, buildings and structures, but again, Painture Fresh is also by him. Also Pegas Pop, which is a fairly well-known design. And um, this like X-ray design is also by him. I think it's called the Please Check In or something. So just, just to name a few, he was also fairly prolific in terms of the amounts of designs and the amounts of well-known, highly coveted designs um, that he did for the Hermes Carré. So I just find it super interesting to like research that. And I mean, there are tons, as I said, like 150 designers and like artists that over the years collaborated with Hermes. I can't go into every single one of them, but as I said, um, if you're interested, I can certainly make that a topic that I'm gonna integrate more into my channel. And um, I think I'm gonna talk about two more designers. Again, I have to, at least for one of the names, I have to look down the first one and quite literally because he apparently, based on my research, was the first designer to ever, or like the first artist to ever work with Hermes and he designed the first Carré scarf ever produced. His name is Hugo Grucard. Again, hopefully I'm doing his uh, name somewhat justice in terms of the pronunciation and talk about pronunciation. The scarf, so like the first ever scarf design, which um, incidentally he did collaborate on or like work on with Robert Dumas himself, is called Jeu des Omnibus et Dames Blanches. Based on my research, Les Omnibus and Les Dames Blanches used to be two bus companies that were in some kind of rivalry. Who knows why and they decided to make um, that like the theme of the first ever Carré produced. But Hugo Grica is also known for the Ex Libris design and the Brie de Gala, as I said. So obviously very well known and highly coveted designs that um, transcended the Carré designs and were integrated in like uh, I don't know, like the homeware, for instance, uh, like the Mosaico 24, that obviously features the Ex Libris design. And I mean, the Ex Libris is everywhere. It's like even on the floor of some of the entrance um, areas of Hermes boutiques. So yeah, and obviously like Brie de Gala doesn't need any introduction. So Hugo Ricard was the first ever artist to work with Hermes on silk scarves. And going from the very start of the um, Carré designs all the way to the present, I have to mention one of my favorites, if not my favorite artist that designs scarves for Hermes. And that is Hugo Gattoni. Another Hugo, but um, like 
spelled out in a different way. He's behind the Grand Prix of Faubourg and Hippopolis. I think it was one of his first designs for Hermes. So is the Battery New York scarf, which Ha, ah, that scarf, because not only does London have a special place in my heart, so does New York, and I miss out on that scarf design. So those are by him, and there's another one that's fairly well known. Something with Cheval. Le Cheval à Plume? Something like that? Anyway, so I did mention at the beginning that there's a huge variety in terms of the um, like styles of artists that yeah work with Hermès, and some are more on the playful side, and no one does it better than Hugo Gattuni, in my personal opinion, because one of his signature style elements are these like tiny, tiny cartoon horses that are able to walk on two feet. And it's just like looking at one of his scarves, they are so detailed and looking at them, you can basically spend like an hour and still find like new elements and like lots of like tongue in cheek moments. Um, yeah, his scarf designs are exquisite. I have yet to add one of his scarf designs to my collection. Actually, let me um, grab the scarf that started the uh, <laughs> video. So this is actually my first ever Carré. So Carré being the 90 by 90 scarves by Hermès. I used to own a Gavroche, which is um, 45 centimeters by 45. And a Brie de Gala design actually, but uh, the one with the hearts that used to be super popular and like impossible to get your hands on a couple of years ago. But I sold that one since because 45 by 45 centimeters is kind of small and I didn't quite know what to do with it. But yeah, this is actually my first ever Hermes 90 by 90 scarf and at some point I think I'm gonna have to add one of Hugo Gattoni's designs because they are just exquisite and like so playful. It's like a work of art. Obviously he's an artist so are all of the other artists that work with Hermes but seeing as they are so detailed and so beautiful I don't know if I'd actually be willing to wear his scarves. Um, it's actually more a thing that I would potentially like frame or buy one of those scarf hanging systems if you've been to an Hermes boutique. Um, usually in the scarf section, it's a somewhat big-ish boutique. Usually they have scarves hanging on the walls and the mechanism that they use for that is actually something that you can purchase for like 600 bucks. So mm, maybe I can like DIY something like that because 600 bucks just for like to be able to hang a scarf that in their own right, like if you buy them new from the boutique, costs another 600 bucks. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but one of his designs probably has to move into my collection at some point. Anyway, I did ramble quite a bit about like Hermes history, Carré history. Um, if you've made it this far, I appreciate that so much. And yeah, definitely let me know if you want me to incorporate more like Hermes history, maybe like with the help of my Le Monde Hermes collection. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I guess I'm gonna catch you in one of my next videos. Bye.